Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. It is late Sunday evening, the 30th of July. Um, I'm sure you can see the difference on the table. Check out this bad boy or bad girl, possibly. This is the Pro 1000, folks. I was able to muscle it up. I guess I'm stronger than I thought I was. Without any problems on the table, plenty of space. Somebody suggested maybe I didn't have enough room. But I do. As I was placing this on the table, I noticed there is a lever about this shape, kind of a V-shaped lever that sits about this position here, right under the base. That comes into contact with the table surface and it depresses it inward. At that point, it measures the actual surface and compares it to the rest of the printer. They recommend you do not move the printer. I have some very uh, interesting uh, warnings here. I have not gotten into the full setup sheet yet. It talks about a lot of warnings not to do this, not to do that. It says here we're installing the printer tanks in this printer for the first time. The printer becomes operational by filling the section from the ink tanks to the tip of the printhead with ink. I love these translations. Therefore, the number of sheets that can be printed on the first ink tank is fewer than the succeeding ink tanks. Well, what they're saying is that most of your original inks containing these cards will be used up to fill the system up. Here's what we're going to do. I spoke with Precision Colors the other night, and they're going to do the same thing within the next week or so. But I'm going to try to begin to do the setup this coming week. Again, I want everything to be set up perfectly. I don't want any problems. So I'm taking my dear time to do this. And I hope you guys have some patience with me. Here's what we're going to do. We want to figure out exactly how much actual ink is going into the system to fill the ink lines, the internal ink compartments which are vented actually, they're not pressurized, just like these cartridges are not pressurized. All the way to the printhead, the printhead may contain dampers. You can see the printhead located right there. It looks very similar to the packaging of the Pro One printhead as well. And so then we will also figure out how much ink is actually being pushed out of the printhead as it is being purged. Now remember the printhead contains a packing fluid or a shipping fluid. So I do not know what the volume of that is. So that's gonna throw our little computation a little bit off because I wanna know how much ink gets pushed into the waste ink pad during the initialization process. I wanna know how much ink is used out of each individual cart. It will not be identical because the ink lines are not exactly the same length. They do differ slightly in length. So what we'll do is we'll measure a full cart. We'll measure all of them. Set up a spreadsheet. We'll measure the empty waste ink tank or cart. And then we will also measure a full waste ink cart. One that has been declared full, which was provided to me by a user. Then we will know all of the numbers. We'll figure it all out once the machine has been initialized i'll take out each of the cards weigh it pop it back in weigh it pop it back in and we'll figure out the difference between each card full weight and the current weight after initialization then we'll go ahead and proceed with the nozzle check the head alignment and then the calibration and they give us some paper to calibrate with here it is right here two packs of paper it says here photo paper pro luster and i thought i saw something here no it says here use this paper for print head alignment and i guess we'll use this one for calibration purposes all right that is it short video just wanted to let you guys know that the printer is no longer living in a box i actually have the box out of frame over there as you can see over to my right you see all those boxes 
that's all new stuff. PGI 29s, Pro 3800 from Epson cartridges, a lot of them still contain ink. And almost, I've had about 90% success resetting them. So these will be made available. And also some fantastic news from my provider. The institute that he deals with is going to be receiving many Pro 1000s. Now remember, during the initialization, the cards are almost depleted. You will have maybe a third of the card ink content left. So soon after they get initialized, there will be lots of empty cards and he's going to send them to me. So after I get my second set of cards modified and ready to go for refilling, I will have maybe one or two unless I send them to Precision Colors. We'll see what kind of volume we can receive as these printers do use a lot of ink more than the Pro 10, more than 3800, more than the 3880 per given size print. They do use a lot more ink because they perform a lot of internal maintenance. Every single print, a tiny amount of ink is actually purged out of the printhead and wiped clean. That's how the printhead stays almost 100% completely uh, free-flowing and primed. All right, and I have yet to figure out um, some of the maintenance processes that take place. Again, we will be discovering all of this as we proceed with the setup and I continue reading that massive manual. So that is it for now. I will be back with the next video tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow. You will see this maybe three days from now because I have a lot of backup videos that I have yet to upload. Mike from Precision Colors on the Printer Knowledge Forum was asked point blank because I posted two pictures showing this printer on my bench and that started a huge conversation in uh, thread. So he was asked point blank, so when are the kids gonna be ready? Well, I have a nearly three page response. I will not read that completely for you, but I will read the, uh, the main uh, points that he discussed. And some of them have to do with uh, the ink that is being prepared. Uh, they have tried, tried, and tried. And the blue ink for the Pro 10 is the red magenta ink. For the Pro 1000 is the blue and the red ink that's giving them trouble. So what they suggest is the only other solution, if you want to get that almost 100% color match and the gamut in those two regions, is to just buy OEM cards and replace those two colors rather than fill them with Precision Colors ink. Replace them with OEM cards. That'll set you back $55 to $60 a card. But hey, better than having to pay $55 to $60 a card for all 12 cartridges. So again, the target price will be about $30 a full refill. That's including the chip. Again, uh, once I get other cards in my hands, empty ones, I will be able to experiment to come up with the swiftest, easiest, and cleanest, less messy process to refill these cartridges. And um, yeah, that should be great. With the complete ink set as we have now, it'll be similar to the current Pro One ink set. And that is an excellent ink set. It lacks a bit on the red portion of the gamut bubble because it will simply not be able to reproduce these ridiculous reds that the original ink set seems to be able to reproduce. So again, if you do the migration slowly and you don't go back to do direct comparisons, then you probably will not even notice that. And uh, with some good profiling, you should be able to at least extract the maximum gamut out of those inks. I did it and I got great results. So I'm looking forward to also getting great results with this printer, whether I remain with OEM and then compare with Mike and see what the differences are, or I choose to then migrate slowly later on to PC inks. We will see, time will tell. I don't know exactly yet what I'm going to do, but I know exactly what we are going to do though, however, we're going to print pairs of every image. And then I will send him a set. 
I will keep it set. He will print pairs of the same exact images and then proceed to send me his set. And then we'll do a video and we'll do a direct comparison. And that will tell the whole story. All right, that will tell the whole story. At that point, if you're still sitting on the fence, you can then make up your mind at that point. It'll be transparent, no sugar coating. All right, thank you. I just received this month several pledges to patreon.com and I really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much. For those of you who were considering doing a one-time donation, we figured out a way so that you don't have to stick with Patreon. Patreon allows you to do one month and then quit. So if you want to do something higher than one dollar, just go ahead and do it and then quit. After the first month is over, before you get charged that second month's donation, just quit, cancel. And then I will then receive that, no problem. But that will be um, a lot easier than me passing out my PayPal account. I am so terrified of doing that. If necessary, I will create a PayPal account simply for this so that you guys that want to do a single donation through PayPal are able to do that. And I will link it to a, uh, I will create a bank account with just $50 in it or something like that. And uh, that way I won't be emptied out like happened to me the last time. It was horrible. We went for a month with no money in the household. So it was really bad, and there are some bad people out there. That's why I'm a little bit weary about passing out my PayPal account. So if you don't mind, if you want to do a donation, you want to use Patreon, go ahead and do it, and then just after the month is done, cancel. All right? That is it for now. Thank you so much. Don't forget to continue to subscribe, sharing, and liking. And until the next time, this should be a lot of happy printing coming up, and I really, really look forward to it. Mwah! Good girl. All right. Happy printing. Bye-bye.